Brothers and sisters in Islam, here we are at the last third of the month of Ramadan. The last ten nights of Ramadan have started last night. This is a season of competition for those who seek the reward of Allah Azza wa Jal, who tho for those who seek to obtain the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal. They are the best nights of the month of Ramadan. So they are the cream of the cream, the best of the best. Ramadan is the best month of the year and these nights are the best nights of Ramadan. And Allah Azza wa Jal was merciful enough on us and prolonged our life to reach these nights. So we need to be grateful to Allah Azza wa Jal and be practically grateful is what I mean by utilizing these nights in the best way that will bring us nearer to Allah the Almighty. Due to the virtue and blessings of these nights, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam singled out these nights in effort and worship in a way which he didn't do in any other time. As Aisha radiallahu anha informs us, as reported by Al-Bukhari and Muslim, she said the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would exert more effort during the last nights, the last 10 nights, than he would in any other time. It reached the point that he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would not sleep at all during these nights. Again, as reported by Al-Bukhari and Muslim, narrated by Aisha. She said, whenever the last 10 nights would start, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would stay up all night and would exert more effort and would tighten his lower garment. This is a, a phrase meaning, as the scholar said, that he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would shun anything else except worship and it also means that he would stay away from his wives, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But this keenness of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was not limited to himself. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would train his household members and would want them to share that reward with him alayhi salatu wa sallam. Ali radiallahu anhu narrated as reported by At-Tabarani that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would wake his household members up whenever the last ten nights would start. This portion is also in Al-Bukhari. And then he said he would wake up every old person and every young person who could tolerate Qiyamul Layl. What is so special about these last nights? It is one night, Laylatul Qadr. A night which Allah Azza wa Jal described to be blessed. Saying, Inna anzalnahu fi laylatin mubarakah. We have sent it down, referring to the Quran, during a blessed night. It's a night, whoever coincides with it in worship and obedience would get an amazing abundant reward. Allah Azza wa Jal says, Laylatul Qadri khayrun min alfi shahr. The night of Al Qadr is better, in reward that is, than 1,000 months. That's more than 83 years, brothers and sisters. We can obtain the reward of more than 83 years of worship, which do not include Laylatul Qadr, by simply coinciding with Laylatul Qadr whilst in the state of obedience and worship. Not only that, it's a night that abundant mercy and blessings descend from Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah continues to say in Surah Al-Qadr, تَنَزَّلُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَالْرُوحُ فِيهَا بِإِذْنِ رَبِّهِمْ مِنْ كُلِّ أَمْرُ سَلَامٌ هِي حَتَّى مَطْلَعِ الْفَجْرِ The angels and the spirit, referring to Jibreel, 
descend therein by the permission of their Lord with all decrees. Peace it is until the emergence of dawn. Ibn Kathir, rahmatullahi alayhi, said, commenting on this verse, angels descend in abundance during that night because they, they descend with the descent of mercy and blessings from Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Azza wa Jal bless this ummah with this night because our lifespan is short compared to the nations before us. So Allah Azza wa Jal made up that extended lifespan for others with that night. So let us not lose out or miss out on that night. The Prophet ﷺ specifically mentioned the reward of this night to highlight its importance. He said وسلم, as reported by Al-Bukhari and Muslim on the authority of Abu Hurairah, whoever prays Qiyamul Layl during the night of Al-Qadr will get all his previous sins forgiven. And at the same time, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam warned us not to neglect that night. He warned those who are lazy not to be lazy during that period, lest they will miss out on a lot. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, as reported by an nasai and classified as sound by al Albani, and the authority of Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu, he said, the month of Ramadan has, you are, you are approached by a month. In it, there is a night which is more, more rewarding than a thousand months. Whoever is deprived of it is deprived of a great deal of goodness. But Allah Azza wa Jal is merciful and wise. Allah knows the nature of people. And for this reason, He subhanahu wa ta'ala did not specify the night of Laylatul Qadr. Abdullah ibn Abbas narrated as reported by Al-Bukhari and Muslim that the Prophet وسلم, said when he was talking about Laylatul Qadr, when it is, he said, seek it during the last 10 nights of Ramadan. What's the wisdom? If we know that, for example, the 21st of Ramadan is the night of Al Qadr, we would stay in the masjid 24 hours, praying, supplicating, mentioning Allah, doing all forms of worship but then neglect the remaining nine nights before and after. That's why Allah Azza wa Jal did not specify it. Rather, it moves from year to year. Shaykh Al-Uthaymeen said that the correct opinion of the scholars is that Laylatul Qadr changes from one year to the other. It moves within these last ten nights. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us a dua to say during Laylatul Qadr. In essence, we actually say it during the last 10 nights because we don't know which is the night of Al Qadr. So this is even more reward. We supplicate all the time during these last 10 nights. In the book of Al Nasa'i, classified as authentic by Al Albani, Aisha radiallahu anha narrated that she asked the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. She said, "If I would, if I were to coincide with the night of Al Qadr, what should I ask my Lord?" He said, "Say, Allahumma inna ka afuun tuhib kareem tuhib al afwa, faafu anni. O oh Allah, you are pardoning, generous." and love to pardon, so pardon me. The night or the nights, the last 10 nights of Ramadan started last night. 
So let us take advantage of this opportunity. It's a precious treasure Allah Azza wa Jal has gifted us, made available within reach. It just depends on who's going to reach out and take from this treasure. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to enable us, utilize these last 10 nights. Allahumma ameen. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fastaghfiru. Alhamdulillahi wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. How can one ascertain coinciding with the night of Al-Qadr? It's a difficult matter to know. Actually, it's impossible because it's of the unknown. But how can I ascertain the reward promised and based on worshiping Allah Azza wa Jal during that night? Well, applying one of the sunan of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will entitle you to be amongst those who coincide with the night of Al-Qadr. It's the sunnah of i'tikaf. Secluding yourself in one of the masajid with the intention of worshipping Allah Azza wa Jal alone. The Prophet Sallallahu used to do that every year to make sure and he would spend the entire last 10 nights, the entire period, to make sure he coincides with night, the night of Al-Qadr and to teach us and to legislate for us Muslims to do as he sallallahu alayhi wa used to do. I'tikaf is a blessing in itself. It, if it doesn't have any other reward but coinciding with the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa it would be sufficient. But there is a lot more to it than that. It's enough that you're in seclusion so your heart is pure. Your heart is not busy with worldly matters. It's detached from this dunya. It's detached from worldly matters and affairs. You have all your time designated for worship. You will be praying the five daily prayers every day in congregation because you simply happen to be in the masjid. You have a lot of time to mention Allah and recite the Quran. And more importantly, you will have the time to hold yourself to account. To think about your shortcomings and mistakes. Purify your heart and purify your soul. You will have a golden opportunity to repent, sincerely repent, because there are no, there are no obstacles in your way. You will think and reflect about the purpose of creation and start preparation. Have a new intention, a fresh intention to repent and work for your akhirah. It's an opportunity for those who properly utilize it. Properly means less sleep, less food, less drinks, less interaction with people, except in one case that coincides with the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu If you find another devout brother who is serious about his akhirah and serious about i'tikaf, with whom you can review the Qur'an. Because the Prophet ﷺ used to do that with Jibreel every year in Ramadan. And especially during the last 10 nights. We need to work hard. The opportunity is available. It's just depending on us. Whether or not we want to utilize it. We ask Allah Azza wa to help us do so. Allahumma aghfir lana dunubana wa israfana fi amrina. وثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم اجعلنا من عتقائك في هذا الشهر من النار اللهم حرم وجوهنا وأجسادنا على النيران اللهم اغفر لوالدينا ولمن له حق علينا اللهم صل